Welcome back everybody. This is part five of the easiest banjo roll series. When you're playing these rolls, it's important when you first start to get a very even sound or volume among the three fingers that you're using, your thumb and your first two fingers. In other words, you don't want to have this or one sticking out above the rest. Fairly even, but it's also important when you're starting to strike them clean and clear and with power because you're training these muscles not only where to go but how hard to hit the string. As you're playing in a jam situation, you don't want to necessarily go as loud as you can, especially when somebody else is taking a break or when somebody is singing. In that case, you want to alter your volume. Get a recorder and record yourself because you can really understand better or hear better how loud you're playing and also how accurate your role is when you record yourself and listen back to it. Let's talk about a new concept here as I've mentioned in previous videos and that's combining the seven note roll with the 15 note roll. How do you know when to do one and when to do the other? Well, there's no hard and fast rules for that. The 15 note roll covers two measures, whereas the seven note roll covers one measure. So maybe a good starting point is to take a song that has two measure blocks of chords and one measure block of chords, okay? Such a song would be Cabin in Caroline. We'll go to that, another classic. For this, I'm gonna start it at 40 beats a minute. And I'll give you a run through of what the chords are and I'll put them up on the screen as well so you can follow along. Let me run you through it without the strum machine and then we'll play it. Here we go. Start with the 15. One, two, three, four. the first line. I'm using the 531. We'll eventually get into the 521, but the 521 is a little bit more challenging than the 531. The second line is two measures of G, two measures of D. It goes like this. Two, three, four, fifteen. To the D, fifteen. The third line is going to be two measures of G, one measure of C, one measure of G, just like the first line. Goes like this. One, two, three, four. C. G. And finally, the fourth line. One measure of G, one measure of D, and two measures of G. Sounds like this. One, two, three, four. You can either write it down. Really, what you want to be working at is bringing it up here. There's a great book called Brain Joe by Josh Turknet that you should read. If you're a banjo enthusiast and just a music enthusiast, it has a lot of information in it, but one of the things he talks about is how important it is to get away from the reading, the tablature, etc., and get it in to your brain because there are different networks that your brain uses when you're reading versus listening, hearing, and internalizing the music. That's what we really want is to internalize it because at a jam, it's no fun stopping everybody and saying, hold on, I got to find it. I think it's page 74. Okay, I've got it. And have a music stand there. You want to get to where you can play these just by ear. It's not as tough as you think it is. Anyway, here we go with Cabin and Caroline at 40. And we're going to uh, go through the verse section. That's what we just covered. One, two, three, four. Thank you. 
You can rewind that, play it a few more times if you'd like to, or as I said, get your own strum machine and, and you can loop. Great thing about the strum machine is you can loop parts. It doesn't have to go through the whole song if you're just working on three or four measures of a song. You highlight it and you can just loop those measures. I use that function all the time. Let's talk about the chorus. The chorus is two measures of C, two measures of G for the first line. It goes like this. One, two, three, four. The second line, two measures of G, two measures of D, goes like this. One, two, three, four. is two measures of G, one measure of C, one measure of G. We saw that twice in the verse. This time it's in the chorus, the third line. One, two, here we go. And finally, the fourth line of the chorus is exactly the same as the fourth line of the verse. One measure of G, one measure of D, two measures of G. Goes like this. One, two, three, four. Let's try the chorus with strum machine at 40 beats per minute. One. Start with the C. If you're feeling good with that, can play along. Let's bump it up. We'll go up to 50 beats per minute. Okay, I'm going to go through the whole thing now. We're going to go verse and chorus. Remember, if it's two measures, we're using a 15. If it's one measure, we're using a 7. We're just going to keep that ruled out. It doesn't mean you can't switch chords in the middle of a 15 note roll. You can, but it's a little cleaner to do it this way, at least for starters. Here we go, up to 50 beats per minute, taking the whole thing through. One, two, three, four. That's going to do it for this video. Come back in the next video 
and we're going to go back to that 5-2-1 idea. We might try it with Cabin and Caroline, but I also want to show you some new chords that you can use going up the neck. They're two-finger chords. Good luck with your woodshedding. Hey.